while he's the hurting old people. Honourable John Biscone. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the last fortnight has been a period of great change, rejuvenation, and optimism within the ACT Party. <laughs> Sir, when we returned to Parliament last Tuesday, we did so having elected a new leader, Dr. Brash, and a new leader of the ACT Parliamentary Party. Mr. Brash, of course, is a former leader of the National Party and is deeply concerned, sir, for the current economic and social state of our country at a time when we're borrowing over $300 million a week and we have high levels of unemployment, and particularly, sir, amongst Māori, Pacifica and young people, sir. Mr. Brash's economic credentials are, of course, unparalleled. He spent 14 years as a Governor of the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, five years, sir, for the World Bank in Washington, D.C., and has served on many policy advisory committees for the government since 1974. He has extensive time, sir, in private enterprise. More recently, he chaired the 2025 task force charged with analysing and promoting policy, sir, that will first of all lessen and then eliminate the income gap, sir, between New Zealand and Australia. And so the government's response to two very well-reasoned supports, sir, has been to scrap that task force out of sheer embarrassment. How ironic then, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister's first response last week to the new Act team was to move a motion, Mr Speaker, congratulating the New Zealand Breakers basketball team on their outstanding victory in the Australian National Basketball League. Sir, they dared to dream, to achieve something that few New Zealanders had thought possible and had never been done before, sir. They won an Australian-based A-grade professional sporting championship. Mr Speaker, the ACT Party asks why New Zealanders can't also dream, as the Breakers did, aspire to raise our living standards, sir, to, to aspire, sir, to raise the levels of prosperity in this country and to address our social problems. We've done it before, sir. We've been successful in the past, and there's no reason why we can't be again, sir. But it requires the courage to articulate economic policies and the honesty to present them. It's a pity, sir, that when Phil Goff lamented the price of electricity at Grey Power's National AGM last weekend, he also didn't tell them that he voted for an ETS that increased the price of electricity by, 5, by 10 per cent, Mr Speaker. Sir, expect to hear more from ACT on the ETS choice in education, the damage to our society of debilitating dependent culture on social welfare and the wasteful use, sir, of government resources. Mr Speaker, the ACT Party will present a different approach to the public in the coming months. We do, however, remain absolutely committed, sir, to the confidence and supply agreement that we signed with the National and will continue to provide solid, reliable and stable government, sir. But there will be one change, sir. We will not be taken a a for granted, sir. Sir, the ACT Party, uh, the National Party rather, sir, opted to insert a treaty clause in the Environmental Protection Agency going through this House this very afternoon. Sir, we weren't consulted on that. We certainly weren't given, given the 48, no, 48 hours notice required under the Confidence and Supply Agreement for major amendments of this nature, sir. Heather Roy, on behalf of the ACT Party, voted against that treaty clause, sir, in committee stages. And this, this afternoon, sir, our party will be voting against that legislation in the third reading of the bill. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Maurice Williamson.